Uh, today, Dr. Blumley will share his research on coral reef resilience and highlight some of his work here in American Samoa. Where is yours, sir? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, governors, co-chairs, and members of the task force. I, I really want to express my deep appreciation for the opportunity to come and, and speak with you um, about our, our work here and around the world. Um, and members of the, the audience, uh, my appreciation for being able to work here in American Samoa. Uh, we've established a research program here for the last five or six years. Uh, it's been a highlight of my research career to have the opportunity to work here. It's a fabulous place to work. It's a fabulous group of people to work with. And along the way, I've, I've met many, many people who've been supportive, who've been friends, uh, who have been excited about what we can do and have provided at least me the opportunity um, to, to contribute some of our scientific knowledge to making the The line across that graph shows the bleaching temperature, the, temper, the temperature at which corals in American Samoa typically bleach. And what you can see is that the lagoons, the bacteria lagoons in Oku, heat up way beyond the bleaching tolerance of corals. And the corals do not know they're supposed to be dead. And the corals are thriving there, and they are thriving in conditions that are way above their normal thermal limits. Our question, uh, actually posed originally by Peter Craig, was how do corals do this? How do corals live in Ofu, and what does it tell us about their ability to live at higher temperatures elsewhere in the world? We summarized data from these data loggers that were about, this is about a six month summary. We see that the lower part, the smaller pool is in general much, much, much warmer <coughs> than the upper pool, the bigger one, the cooler pool. So these corals live in different pools, they, they generally see different average environments, and we can begin to ask, well, not only are they living in the back even of the where it's warm, but there's some extremely warm microclimates and some less warm microclimates. And then, as genetics lab, we can take samples from corals back to Stanford, run them through this set of machinery here, and basically do a set of DNA sequencing studies on all the genes and all of the um, patterns of gene expression that these corals have. Essentially, a genomic and DNA map of how these corals live where they live. It's compared about 25,000 genes. Uh, Rachel's data set right now includes 25,000 genes from about 50 different coral colonies. It makes it the makes it the single biggest DNA sequencing project on corals in the world. Here's the way it works. Uh, the work we've been doing in OFU is really the first in the world to show this pattern and this process. Corals under stress turn on a set of stress genes. Those stress genes allow the coral to recover from that stress or not. They don't turn on the right genes, they die. Corals in pool 400 have those stress genes already turned on. They're preloaded with these stress genes so that when the water heats up, those stress genes are already on and able to help the coral survive. Uh, they recover from heat faster, they grow faster because they're not spending a lot more of their energy fighting off that stress. We know a lot about what genes those are and what they do. We don't know a lot of things about how they're turned on or turned off, but it gives us the capacity to actually try to find where those genes are turned on, on and off in other corals and other places. But we don't have access to the same kind of long-term field stability of OFU, but we can perhaps understand what the corals are doing by interrogating their genes and finding out which of these genes are turned on. So that's, uh, I just like to say from, from my own heart and from uh, our research team that most of what we do is dedicated to trying to find solutions to these problems. Uh, I haven't found one. But I think what we have found is a way of buying you some more time. And that's okay. Uh, as much time as we can buy by understanding corals and by using that knowledge, I think that's one of the things that I, I want to do. Um, my only request to you is please use it. Use that time to fix these other problems. And thank you for